back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18, and this is episode 11, and this is called Singled Out. And um, this episode, things continue to heat up for the ladies. Um, this was a little bit different of an episode than typical episodes. So Shanna was kind of not really around this episode so much because, you know, we saw at the close of last episode, her and um, Vicky, they're still continuing their um, tour together, the um, Shannon and Vicky show, formerly the Trace Amiga show that um, Tamara was part of. And so we actually get to see a little bit of that, which honestly, whenever the housewives are working outside of the show, and doing their own thing. I do love seeing this. So it was really actually a pretty enjoyable episode overall. I will say that. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is where we find out that this is what's happening because Gina actually pays Shannon the visit. And this is the first time that they've seen each other since um, the fashion show. And um, that's where Shannon talks about the um, her and Vicky show. And Gina's still like in her real estate clothes because I guess she was doing some um, real estate work right around the neighborhood. And so then she paid her a visit and she um, stole, Gina being Gina, stole two lemons from um, a neighbor's house and then gave it to Shannon. But she at least said that's what she did. So she didn't show up without, you know, didn't show up empty handed. So I guess it's the thought that counts, but anyway, it was kind of weird, but anyway. So we do get into the subject of Gina recapping the events of what happened after Shannon left and um, basically um, Katie bringing up the whole real estate thing and um, why she made up with Heather type situation. So Gina's like, I hope we're cleared up now and everything's patched up. And that's kind of how that ends. And so while this is happening, so we have dual scenes. We have Katie going to meet up um, with Jen and M for breakfast at a coffee shop. And I real Emily, I'm speaking directly to you. Stop <laughs> for the upteenth time. Stop doing these slide remarks about Jen. You don't look good doing it. It's not even funny anymore. You already confronted her about why you feel the way you feel, why you do the things you do. And what gets me with Emily is I want to like her because I love when she's being vulnerable, but then she does this weird bully stuff in between. And it's like, girl, just be vulnerable and let it be. Because towards the end of the episode, I will say this, I did take Emily's side when it came to this situation, which is rare for me. I normally wouldn't do that, but in this case, I kind of agree with Emily. I think some of the other ladies were doing a little too much, being a little self-absorbed, which is really weird for me to ever say, um, especially one of the ladies. And so anyway, Emily, I just wish she would stop doing that. So we actually see that Emily and Jen um, are talking about their parenting styles. Um, it gets brought up though because Abigail, Emily's daughter, is just a ham. And so they were talking about that. And then it goes from that to Emily talking about Dawson, her oldest, one who's 17. And the one that she's been, this whole season, she's been alluding to how she's been having issues with. And he's taking um, the divorce the hardest because there were no, basically, because of the divorce, she kind of just let him do whatever he wanted with the separation of it all. And now that her and Ryan are living together under one roof. Ryan, the same obvious, which we know that's, you know, and even Jen agrees with it, he needs structure. And of course, because he's about to be 18, he's not with it. <laughs> and he's, you know, growing to be a man. He's not really with it. And so we're gonna see how that transpires in this episode as well. But then from there, they st uh, move on and they start talking about, um, Shannon um, and how Jen is planning on actually having an event, which happens later on this episode at her place. She's having a party because um, she wants 
Ryan's place to feel like it's her place because I mean, let's be real, it is at this moment. I mean, they live together. This is her man, her man, her man, and her family lives in the house. So she wants to have kind of like a housewarming to make it her situation, which cool. And so then um, they basically they haven't heard from Shannon in regards to her inviting her, but I Jen then does remember that Shannon has her tour that's happening. And then from there, then we see that Shannon and the other scene back to Shannon, she's talking to Gina about the lawsuit and that, yeah, her attorney is basically stating the obvious what everyone's been stating is that John is blackmailing her about the, about the um, videos. And her attorney suggested she files a lawsuit against them. And Emily, back in the other scene, Emily does state that this is very much extortion. Um, and then she's, you know, reason or confessional, the definition of extortion, because we know that Emily is a former attorney. So she's like, yeah, this is a extortion. So what, what are we doing here? And then from there, we see Emily is venting about the fashion show and her size. And, um, you know, what was alluded last episode about how she really felt kind of you know, singled out when it came to the fashion show of it all. And I hate this for Emily because yeah, it is definitely her own insecurities. But I think in this case, Emily knows that this is her own insecurities and she's just simply venting to the ladies, trying to make sure that she's valid in her feelings because she feels guilty for even having the feelings. But she has the feelings because that's what it is. She's insecure because she still feels like that she's being viewed as the overweight girl. And again, if you have never struggled with weight, I feel like in some ways it's hard for people who've never struggled with weight to understand. And I get it. So that's where the episode, like not the episode, wow, that's where this scene ends. And, um, Again, this is a side of Emily I like seeing. Not really, I don't want her to be sad, but I like her getting past the fluff of being kind of a bully and her just being herself and being transparent. That's, this is Emily I like. And um, the question is, is there a safe space for her to do that? Anyway, next thing. So then next we have um, Heather getting ready for the GLAAD Awards and she's presenting and it's again nice to see the ladies doing their own thing a lot of this episode i would say focus on the ladies kind of doing their own thing um also the lady a lot of the ladies and their parenting styles that was definitely a huge theme this episode was the ladies and their parenting style but anyway alexis did show was there too without john thank god and Heather and Meredith, they actually present together. And when I say Meredith, Meredith Marks from Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, which by the way, I will be reviewing and have been reviewing um, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. So definitely make sure you check out my reviews on that. And um, I just kind of wanted to do a nice little friendly plug. Um, also to The Real Housewives of New York, that's going to be coming back soon. I'm going to be reviewing that as well. And then once The Real Housewives of Potomac come back, I'm going to be reviewing that as well. Bravo, you're killing me. It went from a famine to feast. And the fall is actually when I like being outside. <laughs> but anyway, neither here nor there. I just kind of wanted to bring that up. But... That's a plug. So for those who watch this review, definitely feel free to watch that as well. But anyway, so then we have um, Katie and her daughter um, meeting up with Tamara and Sophia and they're doing a candle making class. And um, basically we hear more about how Katie's talking about how her son still lives in Georgia. And um, it's basically kind of a repeat of 
Katie and Tamara bonding over, they have similar situations where not all their kids live with them. And unfortunately, we're going to see that we have another housewife where this is going to be a thing. And it's kind of sad, but it's the reality when things do not work out um, at the end. So um, in the confessional, when Katie is talking about this, she does get emotional because right when she's filming her confessional, which side note, this new confessional look that Katie has this episode, chef's kiss, beautiful beautiful but anyway um she she does get emotional about it because in the confessional it literally just happened where she had to like send her son back to Georgia so it's definitely hard on her and I could kind of see why Tamara is taking a liking to Katie um I think actually Tamara does like Katie in real life because of the fact that her her their daughters get along and so I see why Tamara is actually vouching for her. I think this is probably going to be one of those few times where Tamara is going to be loyal to someone because of the fact that her kids are their kids are actually bonding. So I, I don't think Tamara has that in her where she's going to cause drama um, once the kids are involved, you know. Um, I'm not sure if the other housewives is the same, but it seems like in this case, it's a little different. And they have similar backstories, Katie and um, Tamara, when it comes to the divorce of it all. So I guess this is one of those few scenes that I actually do appreciate Tamara, which I would never thought I would say that. But when Tamara is with her family, that's like when she's not an ice queen. It's like when you actually, it's a few times where you see the real Tamara. So there's that. Anyway, so next we see Vicky and Shannon getting ready for the show in St. Louis. They're basically doing a rehearsal. One thing that is a common theme, though, is Shannon is definitely drinking on these shows. Um, again, I get, I don't want to condemn her for it, and I don't want to be as extreme as Tamara. But I'll be honest, I do kind of look at it a little oddly too because, again, I think I mentioned this before. I didn't mention it in the last episode, but I've mentioned in the past. When you get a DUI, you're on probation for a year. You're not supposed to drink or do drugs when you're on probation. I mean, that's just what it is. It's not drink and drive. You're not supposed to drink when you're on probation. I, I've never heard of probation where you are not allowed to do, where you could just be okay. Like that's literally a whole entire thing, especially when you're getting busted for the said thing. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, um, next we then see um, Jen talking to Dawson and it was a very emotional scene. And I really feel for Jen. I really do. Um, because Jen is around. So Jen and Katie, I think them two are both more around my age. Um, they're older than me, but they are closer to my age group. And with Jen, she sees herself in Dawson. And because Dawson's very dependent. Um, he doesn't do a lot for himself and also lately ever since the move I guess he's been staying out really really late like and you know he's basically rebelling he's being a teacher basically and so Dawson now because he thinks he's grown he doesn't want to live with him anymore and he wants to move in with his dad because his dad is giving him that freedom and um, I hate to say this, but maybe it would be good for him to move in with his dad with his dad because for one, his dad, when you have a dad in your life, especially I would assume with him being a son, he can help teach him to man up, if you will, and you know, kind of show him the ropes, but then it doesn't come off as parenty, I think. Um 
So maybe this will be good, but it definitely was a heartbreaking, heartbreaking scene because a lot of one thing that I will say that and Jen, I do feel for you, but one thing that has never worked, at least when it comes to even my parents, um, and I hope you watch this back and try to, you know, help repair these things. Parenting out of fear. She's went from one extreme to the other without a warning, and he's like, no. <laughs> You know, and um, because, and but she was very open and honest is like, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made. I'm in my 40s and I basically don't have my stuff together. And yeah, he's she, so, and she's like, you know, at the end of the day, I will try to do better, but at the same time, I'm always gonna be your mom. Like, you know, the speech. And hopefully, you know, come the reunion, we get an update and things are better. Um, it wasn't really volatile. He was still very respectable, but she's gonna basically let him move in with his dad. So I kind of alluded to that earlier. So that's how this scene ends. Okay, next, the ladies are getting glammed, they're getting ready to go to Jen's party. Now, while this is happening, we actually see some footage of the live show um, in St. Louis of Shannon and Vicky's show. And um, it looks like a fun show, and I will say this, um, I Shannon does seem happy doing this show, like genuinely happy. Yes, she's drinking, but she does. it does seem like a healthy way of her making income because it doesn't seem like it's like a fake happiness where she's excessively drinking. It seems like she's just having her cocktails and having a good time. Now, I can't attest to whether she actually has an alcohol, if she's an alcoholic or not, or if she has a problem or not. Um, I, I, you know, we don't see her every day and really, from a TV show, there's really no way of knowing that. Um, but I will say from the scene, she they were having a blast. And even, you know, Vicky was even saying it herself, like she sees the joy in, um, at, in, in her and her basically being able to make income for herself outside the show and be herself and then actually connect with her audience and really be transparent because in the show she actually did, you know, fess up to the DUI and owned it. And maybe she's doing that at every single stop, um, which, hey, you know, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. And really after last week's episode, she needed a break. And I feel like all the other ladies agree with her that she needed a break. But <laughs> I think at Towards the end of this um, party, a lot of the ladies wish that they were at Shannon and Vicky's show. Katie being one of them who even said it. So anyway, so while this is happening, um, Jen talks to the ladies about Dawson um, and you know she breaks the news and they're being very, very supportive. And then Alexis shows up last and joins Lee's and she's just being so extra and being coy. She's just kind of not really being herself. And then she just starts breaking down and crying. And I will say this. Um, I kind of wish Alexis will led with what's going on with her actually and not the John of it all. Because this was a few, this was a small moment where I kind of felt bad for her. But I can't help that I can't. The problem is because she's acted the way she's acted for t for like 10 episodes straight, I can't feel bad for her all the way because she's just been acting like a total jerk. But now knowing all the things she's been going through, it's like, if you would have led the, with that, I think you would have been a lot more likable. And the prop, but the problem is you didn't do that. And even to the point where the ladies are starting to get fed up with her, and Tamara is one of them. 
which we knew that was going to happen. We knew part, I feel like we all knew that Tamara was really only friends with her because of her issues with Shannon. That's how it comes off to me. I don't know. I don't think it's genuine at all. I'll just, I'll just say that. And um, Emily was friends with her or trying to be cool with her. Um, but Emily's fed up with her too. She's like, oh my gosh. And it, it does end up imploding towards the end of the episode. But basically what we find out though, Alexis, we, so Alexis lost her mom. So her, Alexis, so her mom passed away. She broke up with her fiance. She gets with John right away. And then the lawsuit that's happening with John and Shannon. And it's just like, it's a lot at once. And, but the thing is what I will say, I feel like this does make John look worse because it shows me that John has a type. Now, Tamara and Emily made a horrible joke saying that the type is he likes crazy women, but no. I feel like he likes the type of women who are in vulnerable positions. He seems to go for women who are in vulnerable positions um, in life because he seems like an opportunist. And it, it doesn't look different to me here. That's what I'm seeing here. And so Janet, so not Jan, wow. <laughs> Alexis literally freaks out, goes, after she freaks out, she goes to Jen's restroom, regroups, and comes back, and then now she's like this extra version of her, which it seems like it could be fun, but because of all the things, it's kind of annoying. And again, while this is happening, Tamara and Emily are in like the kitchen just calling her wackadoodle and just are like over. They're over it with her. They're done with her. So then next the ladies go and start playing a game of Jenga and all the ladies were being extra and it did actually look fun. So Alexis tries to burn one of the Jenga blocks right away in the fireplace and then immediately takes it out because they're like giant. Like the blocks are this big. Like they're like those, that type of Jenga. Um, and as they're taking things out, they're reading things, they have to do things. So like, kind of like, it's basically like Jenga Truth or Dare. That's all it is. And then so Heather barks like a dog. Um, and she literally sounds like a dog. It's kind of hilarious. Um, Katie moons um, Tamara, uh, and Tamara likes it, apparently. And then Tamara gets the block where she needs to pee in the yard. So instead of peeing in the yard, she ends up peeing like just on the sidewalk right then and there, and it was quite disgusting. And they joke about how she's not home trained, we already knew that, and it's like, ew. That's one thing that, that's just kind of gross about Tamara. Like, I don't understand why she always wants to bring, like, the frat girl. Like, it's not even sorority. I would, honestly, it's kind of frat boyish in her, at, at her big age. It's just not attractive. I don't, it, it's just ill. Ill. It's ill. Anyway, and if I was Jen, I would have kicked her out of the house. I, I would have kicked her out because that was gross. I don't want your pee like on my sidewalk. And then even Jen like shaded her in confessionals. Like even my dogs know not to do that. That's disgusting. And I'm like, yeah. And then they cling it with like the pool. And I'm just like, ew, ew, gross. Anyway, so then after the game's over with, Tamara asked Heather about the clothing line that, you know, she was, they were all modeling at the fashion show when that's coming out. And you know, from there, Emily then decides she does want to talk to Heather about the fashion show. What I will say, because it is Heather, <sighs> Emily probably should have talked to Heather about one-on-one -on -one because we know that Heather gets defensive super easily. So guess what? She got defended. She, she got defensive. And the whole entire time when Emily's just trying to vent her about the situation, Emily's been trying, she's trying to preface this 
that she doesn't blame her for anything. She's just venting about how she feels. She doesn't think that this is what Heather was doing, and but this is just how she feels. The problem is though, because she's doing this in front of all the ladies, you have Miss Doing Too Much herself, Alexis making it about her because she got brought up for one second And she's being a total ditz, listening to it completely out of context. And all the ladies are trying to tell her, girl, we weren't making it about you. And then as all this is happening, Heather is twisting it around and thinking, oh my gosh, you are you think I would do that at the fashion show? Like single you out like that? And <sighs> Emily was not trying to say that. Emily was simply trying to say that she felt singled out at the moment and, and it was basically just how she felt not what it was but just how she felt and she's like I'm just venting this isn't about you this is a me problem the thing is if this was so if, em, if Emily was talking to Jen this would be a well received conversation if Emily was talking to Gina, well-received conversation. If Emily was talking to Shannon, probably a well-received conversation. If Emily was talking to Katie, it would be a well-received conversation. And honestly, even if she was talking to Tamara, it probably would be a well-received conversation. But the problem is, Emily and Heather have always had this weird, contentious relationship. We knew how this was going to end, unfortunately. And it did not help that Alexis was there making it worse and just spiraling the whole entire time. Which is making Emily extra upset because Emily already is annoyed with Alexis already. And so she proceeds, so it goes from that to Alexis. So now Emily's redirecting re, re her attention to Alexis and calling her a wackadoodle and trying to get, she's like, girl, stay out of it. I am not even talking to you. And it just, it just went to hell. It went to hell. And then from there, Tamara is taking, um, it's taking, um, Wow. <laughs> Heather to the side. And Tamara is kind of seeing it more or less from em like not Emily's position, but from Tam um, from Heather's position. Because it does without context, and the problem is no one was listening all the way. Or no one was really hearing each other. Like everyone heard each other, but no one was listening. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. And so Tamara was kind of seeing it from Heather's standpoint. But, and then the rest of the ladies were like really trying to hear, like, so the rest of the ladies, like all, like four of the ladies saw it from Emily's standpoint. So you have Emily and then you have like Gina, Jen, and Katie. They knew what she was trying to say because they, again, partially because she already talked to them about it before. So she... They understood what she was trying to say and it just did not translate well and it ended where <laughs> uh it ended where basically emily just continue ends up going closes the episode closes where emily is going off on alexis and nothing gets resolved and that's how the episode ends and i really did feel bad because when before Alexis even chimed in, I kind of did see what Emily's talking about. When it didn't seem genuine at all, when Heather was like kind of a pop, like saying, I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to feel that way, you know, all that. But also, I will say this, when Emily gets really, really wound up, she doesn't listen either. Because Heather did apologize for making her feel a certain way. But again, 
it's kind of a non-apology when you say, I'm sorry you feel that way. But in this case, I guess I'm kind of confused because if Emily is saying this is just how she feels, then shouldn't she say, sorry you feel that way? Because we know, I mean, at the end of the day, we know that we know that um, Heather did not intentionally do that to her. And, you know, Emily cannot expect a grown woman to coddle her with coddle about her insecurities. That is, that is an Emily problem that she needs to work out. And really, honestly, I will say this, Emily does kind of need a therapist. I mean, that's very clear. But at the same time, I just wish, um, I just wish Heather would have been a little bit more sensitive. But I, Heather is not really a, good with emotions. We know that. And the thing is, Emily knows that. So it's one of those things that's just interesting watching because you're just like, you know how this is going to go based on the dynamic of you two personalities. So it wasn't going to end well. That's just what it is. And then you have this chaos that is um, Alexis there. We know it's not going to end well. And she made it into something else that even wasn't. And it just ended a certain way. But anyway, that is how the episode ended. It's going to heat up because Ryan's going to get into the mix next episode. Ryan and Eddie. And it's going to be interesting. But anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, a.k.a. The Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.